Welcome Trinity Parish and welcome everyone worshiping with us here in the other in Trinity Hall at home. Um, we are delighted to be worshiping with you on this second Sunday after Christmas and the beginning of our bicentennial celebration. It's, a, uh, it's an interesting thing. We have a, if you know your St. Augustine history, you know that, the, uh, that we didn't take possession, the America did not take possession of St. Augustine until July 17th of 1821. The very next day, the mayor and the, the new American civic leaders gathered probably over coffee and donuts in the government house across the street. And they said, we need three things around this place. We need a school, a library, and a Protestant church. And so they wrote away a letter to, uh, to, to Charleston, and Charleston sent, apparently, uh, we think maybe they sent all three. The one we know for sure was they sent us a missionary. They sent us Andrew Fowler, who when he showed up was 61 years of age, and he got to town in the middle of a yellow fever epidemic. I'm late. I'm, late. I'm sorry that I'm late. <laughs> I took a right, but I should have taken a left, and I've done it again. Uh, oh. This way, Reverend Fowler. Thank you. Ah, well, it's good to finally be here. Um, on this auspicious occasion, I have written a speech. A speech? A speech. Is it a sermon? No, that's your job. Okay. <laughs> it's his job this morning. It was Father Ken's job all last week, and that's why we gave him this Sunday off. I was just, I was just noticing your, your, that how they do it now. Indeed, yes, <laughs> cassock and surplus. This is actually sort of the old school way to do it, okay. but not as old school as you. Uh, I see how you are. Okay. Uh, oh. Yeah, it works better that way. There we go. <clears throat> Good day to the Christian people of Saint Augustine. I'm the Reverend Andrew Fowler. And I have been summoned here by your civic leaders. I've left the fair, glorious city of Charleston and their fine, upstanding people to come to this quaint, <laughs> godforsaken place with, filled with ruffians and brigands and... Oh, come on. <laughs> We're not that bad. I'll stick to the I'll stick okay. to the, stick stick to the, I'll the stick to the speech. Uh, to bring the good news of Jesus Christ and to gather up a communion of souls to form a church. It's a good idea. First Protestant church in the territory. Now, I know you had one when the British were here. Uh, matter of fact, I've, I understand some of you are still using their prayer books. Good. Good on you. It was actually down the street a block on the right. Well, I would turn left, but you that's might. okay. You might. Well, I'm glad you have the prayer books because that's the, the beautiful thing the only is thing the British left. Us. You actually could still visit that church because the Catholics, when we left, took it apart brick by brick and rebuilt it in our vicar's lot. So it's yes. still there. It's, uh, okay, let's do that. Where's the Catholic church? Right across. To the to the left. To the right. To the right. Okay. Yeah. You're right. My, They're left. As as I. I can see how this is tough. my speech. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not dead yet. <laughs> nice. Uh, and I stand here in this old Got a Spanish Monty Python reference for us in there. <laughs> had to. So I stand here in this old Spanish town, even despite a terrible plague of yellow fever, I can envision a house of worship being built with a with a tower from which the sound of a ringing bell uh, will call all people to God. And, and that's, that's one of the things we're here for. I, I'm, I'm certain that I will soon hear that bell. <laughs> See, we threw him off. <laughs> By going off script. Yes, my, well, my, my work is done, unless you have something. Thank you very much, Reverend Fowler. Nice to meet Reverend Fowler and... Um, I'd like to thank Jack Daly, who's been ringing that bell since 1947. So, um, Jack was actually our motivation. He, he uh, when I first got here, he said, I have a dream that we would get the bell re rehabilitated, and we didn't get to do it in our last 
our last capital campaign, and we said, well, it'd be a great bicentennial project. So between um, Jack's help and a bunch of you who donated $200 each and came up with $20,000, and then Mrs. Janet Wesson, who in the, um, in the memory of her late husband, Bill, matched our grant, and that got the bell completely finished. So thank you, and thank you, Janet. And I would venture to say that the good reverend may appear again sometime in the bicentennial. So be on the lookout for Reverend Fowler. And with that, let us enter worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please open your hearts to the reading of God's word. A reading from Jeremiah. For thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them home from the land of the north and grant them from the farthest parts of the earth among them the blind and the lame, those who with child and those in labor, together a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd of flock. For the Lord has transformed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. 
They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in, as in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and thy people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. We will pray responsively by whole verse, Psalm 84. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the Lord's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand in my own room, and to stand at the threshold of the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is the sun and shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk with integrity. O oh Lord of hosts, happy are they who put their trust in you. Glory to, to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him. In love, he destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ according to just the good as he chose us will, in Christ before the, the foundation of, his of the world, grace to be he holy freely bestowed and on us in the beloved him in love. I have heard of your faith, faith glory of Jesus, his children and love Jesus toward all the saints, according to just the good pleasure of I do not cease to the foundation of the world as I remember you freely bestowed on us in the beloved. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Christ. Now every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. When they started to look for him among the relatives and friends, when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth. And was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Good morning. morning. Merry Christmas. Hope you're having a wonderful Christmas tide. It is the second Sunday of Christmas, like Father Matt said. It's the tenth day of Christmas, so we have two more days of feasting and celebration of the uh, of the Word made flesh of the God incarnate, who's come to save us. Question for you this morning: Have you ever lost one of your kids at the mall during the Christmas rush, or maybe at a sporting event? I, that's never happened to me personally. I did do that to my father once, though, when I was four years old. My mother sent my dad and I to Regency Square Mall, when it was still a mall back in the day, to, to do some Christmas shopping at the height of the Christmas bustle. And I, right in the midst of a giant crowd, hightailed it, ran away from my dad. He couldn't find me. Looked for over an hour, got security involved and everything. Never called my mom. He says, you know what? I can't go home. He said, I, I couldn't go home without you, Kurt. So <laughs> I, was just either, I was either going to find you or just not go home again because I, I would be a dead man if I showed up without you. Thankfully, the, the, the security found me and everything, everything was fine. I went, I went to hang out at the water fountain, by the way, when he was throwing pennies in there. That's what was going on. Well, if you've ever lost a kid at the mall or somewhere else, the Holy Family feels your pain and feels your anxiety. There they were, the Holy Family, traveling for the holidays, which for them, as with thousands of other devout Jews, that meant traveling to Jerusalem for Passover. Now, remember what they were celebrating there. God rescued his covenant people from plague and death when they were captives in Egypt through the blood of a sacrificial lamb that was slain. God told them, the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. So the Holy Family was there in Jerusalem just like every year, celebrating God's loving, saving, rescuing provision for his covenant people. And they were surely enjoying all the hustle and bustle and the festivities of the holiday season. Word is that the Knights of Lights Jerusalem, Jerusalem edition was especially beautiful that year. And a joyous time was had by all. And then, just like Christmas, it ended way too soon. And they were a little blue because it was time to go home. So they gathered with their traveling group, which was a necessity at the time. Because if you travel, as you travel along the highways, there were a lot of robbers and bandits who would attack you. And so uh, they traveled in groups of families and friends. And they started on their journey home to Nazareth. And this is where we find the biblical version of the movie Home Alone. In the midst of the chaos of packing and meeting up with their traveling companions... Mary and Joseph left Jesus behind in Jerusalem. 
And I can only imagine how that conversation went. <laughs> After a whole day's journey there on the road back to Nazareth, uh, wait, Joseph, where's Jesus? I don't know. I thought you had him. No, I thought you had him. And then the panic sets in, and those horrible scenarios begin to play over and over in their minds. What if he's been kidnapped? What if he's in danger? What if we never see him again? So they hightail it back to Jerusalem, and the frantic search continues for three whole days. Three days they look for him and nothing. Can you imagine the emotional distress and heartache and sadness they were feeling? Not to mention the blaming and the crying and the anger and the fervent prayers. But then after three days, they find him in the temple. And oh, the relief Mary and Joseph must have felt the moment they saw him. And he was not just in there playing Fortnite and Roblox with their devices and all the other kids who busted free from their parents. No, that's not what was going on there in the temple. Rather, the scriptures say this. He was sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. This 12-year-old boy, remember he wasn't considered a man yet in his culture that came at 13 years old. This 12-year-old boy was astounding the temple rabbis, intellectual giants themselves, at, well, at how well he understood the things of God. What they didn't know is that his understanding of the divine came about honestly. Because this 12-year-old boy himself is divine. This 12-year-old is the word made flesh. 100% God and 100% man, human. This 12-year-old is Emmanuel, God with us, God for us, God who has come to rescue us. But I'm quite sure that Mary and Joseph weren't too keen on contemplating divine mysteries at that moment. They probably had that extreme mixture of sweet relief combined with frustrated anger. Oh, thank God, we're so happy we found you. How could you possibly have put us through this? Oh, we're so glad you're safe. Do you have any idea how worried we were? And Jesus' response, not I'm sorry or, oh, I'll never do it again. His response was simply this. Why were you searching for me? Don't you know that I must be in my father's house? Another way to say that is, don't you know what I've come here to do? My father's house does not just refer to a specific location, but the understanding of household in the ancient context meant authority or business, which is why the King James Version translates that verse, did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Well, I'm just a creature, so I'm not going to pretend that I understand how Jesus' humanity and his divinity were engaging with each other at that moment, but I certainly am glad of this. I'm so glad that 12-year-old Jesus in the temple and under divine compulsion was already engaging in the family business. And just what is God's family business? Is it a business that's focused on monetary profits or the bottom line of a balance sheet? No, all the resources in the entire universe are his already because he made it all out of nothing. Is God in the business of seeking revenge and bringing judgment and condemnation on you? No. He didn't come to judge you. He's not out to get you. He's out to love you and forgive you and adopt you into his family and make you brand new. God's business is a business where God himself humbles himself, becomes a creature, makes himself poor for our sake so that we might become rich in his grace, mercy, and love. It's a business that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit decided to go into before the foundations of the world were even laid. God's business is the business of seeking out and rescuing his wayward children, 
It's the business of befriending sinners like you and me and forgiving us and reconciling us back to himself. It's the business of not of counting our trespasses and debts, but canceling the debt that we owed him. It's the business not of keeping score, but of wiping clean our horrible scorecard with his own blood. Tearing up that horrible scorecard that we earned through our sins and trespasses against him. God's business is the business of making all things brand new. His is the business of proclaiming good news to the poor, proclaiming liberty to the captives and recovering the sight of the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. It's the business of binding up all your wounds and making you whole. It's the business of bringing life where there is only death and decay. It's the business of seeking you out, right in that area of your life where you're falling apart, right in that area of your life where you're dying, and loving you there, and bringing you back to life there. God's is the business of bringing peace in the midst of our violence, and equity in the midst of of our prejudice. God's business was foreshadowed there at the Passover. God is in the business of shedding his own blood, freely and willingly, to forgive your sin and reconcile you back to himself, all because he loves you. Dear friend, aren't you glad that Jesus, here as a 12-year-old boy, was joining the family business? Here's the really wonderful thing. What this business has to offer, forgiveness, righteousness before God, reconciliation with God, eternal life, what this business has to offer is incredibly costly and valuable. So costly that it costs God everything. His very body and blood. And yet for us, it's free. It's absolutely free which is a good thing for this sinner at least, because if it wasn't free, I couldn't afford it. What kind of business is that, by the way, that has something incredibly value to offer and just gives it away? Gives it away out of indiscriminate grace. You know whose kind of business it is? That's God's kind of business. That's the kind of business that God is in. Yes, salvation is God's business. And he gives it to you as a free gift all because he loves you. How do you receive it? Well, you just tell him you need it. You just tell him that you want it and trust that it's for you. In other words, faith is how how you receive it. How do you lay hold of it? Right here at this altar is how you lay hold of it. Come and receive for free all that God is for you and all that he has for you by receiving his very body and blood. Well, Luke concludes this story and his entire infancy narrative with the family journey back to Nazareth and Jesus' obedience to his parents. And he says, Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and he grew in divine and human favor. He wasn't born a superman. He developed and grew just like any other human being did. I love that verse in uh, the hymn, the uh, Christmas Carol, Once in Royal David City, says, For he knows our childhood's pattern. Day by day, like us, he grew. He was little, weak, and helpless. Tears and smiles, like us, he knew. And he felt in all our sadness, and he shares in all our gladness. And he lived for us, and he bled for us. And he died for us, and he rose for us, so that we could live forever with him. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Amen. Amen. If you're able, please stand. Reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified and crucified. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose in the end, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us pray for the church and the world. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of your church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for those in authority in all nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That you would be pleased with everything we say and do. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Lord, be with them in their time of need. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially Elizabeth Ellingson. Let your eternal light shine on them. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Holy and life giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Pray for this to you that is nothing but happiness for everybody. You know, we can see smiles again. That there is absolutely no division, that we can all walk as one as you were Amen. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We continue in prayer, confessing our sins against God and our neighbor. mercy on you, forgive you all your sin through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Hey, you might mention, I forgot about this. Come to, the, come to the table every week during our bicentennial. If you look at the back of your bulletin, there's just some little tidbits about the history of Trinity Parish. We put those in there so that we can all kind of understand our rich history here at Trinity. Friends, let's walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, a sacrifice and an offering.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive the power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. 
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Y'all are eating us out of house and home this morning. We ran out of communion wafers. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.